This is the ZI10 USB 2.0 multi-channel mixer from Allen and Heath. It's the first Allen and Heath mixer that I've actually tried. And I asked B&H specifically if I could review this mixer because I wanted to find out one thing. Is it the most affordable multi-channel mixer on the market right now, as of 2017? A while back ago, Alesis left a huge gap in the market when their multi-mix, there was Firewire, which I still have, and a USB 2.0, small format mixer. They took those away and it was the most affordable way to get multi-channel, so that is all of these mic channels into software. Audition, Logic, whatever you're using. If you're a podcaster, you might wanna have multiple people in your studio and then have them all go to their own track inside your software. Well, that's not very affordable, but now this Allen & Heath might be the ticket. It's been a lot of years since those Alesis mixers went away, and I'm hoping that this one will do the job for us. Let's actually go over to the desk, plug it in so that we can actually hear if this is a mixer worth looking into if you want multi-channel and you're on a budget. All right, I've got the ZI10 plugged in and interfaced with Adobe Audition in my case, and that is actually the audio that you're hearing right now coming through the Heil mic, which needs a lot of gain, and I am at about 50 dB on the preamp, at least, maybe 55. So that's one of the keys here. Are the preamps any good? That's what we always wanna know here. It's what I always wanna know and they seem like they're clean. At first I thought maybe not, but I think it has more to do with the preamp on the headphone. I have to wear my dorky headphones, but I think that's a little noisy. So that's a problem in that you may get a little bit more noise when you're monitoring than is actually being recorded, but the good news is what's being recorded seems to be clean. I've got this running, again, almost full preamp, and one of the issues when you're going into software, like Adobe Audition in this case, is the waveform is really small, at least on multi-track, and that's what we're doing here. The waveform, it's not that big. You can zoom in on the waveform, basically make the tracks bigger in Audition, and it depends on what software you're using. So that would be it. It seems like it takes a lot more gain to push through the USB, than it would if I was just coming off on a recorder, which is something I'd also wanna do, come out the recorder, the tape option here for a backup. So you do have that available. But I've got multiple channels going in to Audition. That's very cool. I've got my gain. I can come all the way up. I'm gonna go all the way up. Whoa, the mic gets super sensitive within the last five, 10 to five dB. So this is full blast. I'm trying not to talk too loud. Obviously it's making the microphone a lot more sensitive. The waveform is very visible in Audition, but we wouldn't want our microphones this sensitive because someone on another channel sitting next to us, then their voice would bleed into the microphone. So I'd actually come back down here on this mixer and coming back down to about where I was. And I'm just, when you're this much at the top of the gain, it's very subtle changes make big differences. And you can come up a little bit more on the main mix faders uh, to get your levels. So the preamps sound good. That is a plus. We can move on from there. Some other things, you have an EQ here, which I actually am using a little bit. And that's generally something I like to leave flat. But if you're going live, having an EQ is very nice. A microphone like this, in my opinion, requires some EQing to sound its best. So having an EQ option is nice. Now here's the key, we have two aux sends. That's very nice. If you're gonna do a mix minus, if you wanna bring in people from Skype or a phone or something like that, you have two different aux sends. One is aux send, one is labeled FX send. They both will do the same for you. One is pre-fader, the aux send, one is post-fader, so it's nice you have that option. If you're only running one channel of aux, you can choose, but you can bring in two different sources that way. And each channel has a solo option. So that's very cool, the pre-fader listen button. So when we press that, it'll be just the gain and the EQ, which is what we'll hear and what we'll see on the LED meters. And that'll let us set our levels independently for each channel. So that's very cool. So PFL options on each channel and the USB in actually has its own control. So you have your own knob for USB in, that's very cool. 
These knobs, they feel a little cheap, but they're not bad. Again, this is the most affordable option that I've seen. So that's, it's, you know, I expect some compromise. The headphone control, which I said could be a little noisy, but right now it sounds pretty good. So it's not too bad, but if you crank it up there, it may be a little noisy. Although right now I'm not introducing a lot of noise. So that's nice. And even the addition of another microphone, if I plug that in and I set my levels here for the ATR, I'm gonna notice a little bit of noise, but it's coming from the microphone. I'm not hearing the preamp introducing that. When I have the ATR 2100 here, I set the levels and it sounds really good. Adding in a whole bunch of gain to another channel is not adding any noise, not the ZI-10. Any noise is coming from an additional mic in the room. But if we listen here, it's still quiet. And I'll turn in the preamp on this microphone. And it's quieter now because I'm using just this microphone, which actually could probably be a little bit louder. So I'll bring that up. All right, and that's probably the noise in the room that you're hearing right there. I don't think that's the preamp. All right, a few other things about this mixer to run through really quick. The power switch uh, is backwards, so off is actually up and on is actually down. So that threw me for a loop in the beginning, but these are manufactured in the UK, so maybe that's a standard over there. Obviously, not a big deal. Just your mixer is not in reverse. It actually, well, it is in reverse, but that's how it works. But the key is having an on-off switch is really nice because some of the cheaper mixers, much cheaper than this, you'd have to unplug every time. That's not actually convenient. And you have two stereo channels. If you wanna bring in like a soundboard that has music, if you wanna record in real time, you can bring in two different channels of stereo audio, or in the case of a mix minus, you're gonna bring in your mono source and use that channel for your mix minus. You have two XLR connections for connecting professional monitors, if you have those. With a headphone output, there is only one, so you'd wanna get like a headphone amplifier if you're gonna have those multiple people in studio. Everyone gets control of the amount of volume that goes into their headphones. If you have a headphone amp, that'll split out the individual monitoring sources for this single headphone. Your USB out has several different options. If you have two people in studio and a stereo track, you wanna send that out to USB multi-channel, you can do that. If you wanna send out two mic channels, your aux and your effects send, both aux ends, you can send just that out of the USB. And if nothing is selected, all four of the microphones will go out to separate channels in your software. This is of course plug and play for Mac. That's what I have here, that's what I've tested. If you're on Windows, you'll wanna go out and get the latest drivers, which I haven't been able to test here because I don't have a Windows machine, but plug and play works great on the Mac. And in the headphones again, you can choose if you wanna monitor the FX in, the aux in, or the stereo in. Overall, I like this mixer. If you are on a budget and you need multi-channel, that is why you would pick up this mixer, at least in my opinion. There are a lot of other mixers in the multi-channel market, not a ton, but you would have to pay a lot more or significantly more to upgrade to the next model. So if you're thinking you need multi-channel, you can get four separate tracks of audio into your software. The ZI-10 is a good option. A couple important notes before I wrap up my look at the ZI-10. If you're going into something like Skype or any other voice over internet software, you can hear your voice that you are sending out so you can hear the audio, that's good. You wanna be able to monitor your own audio as well as hear the signal coming back in. And this is if you're connected via USB. So this was an issue on the Q802 from Behringer that I looked at. If you're using a mix minus setup, if that's how you're doing it, it's not an issue anyways, not even on the Behringer because a mix minus doesn't rely on the USB and you're fine. So just know if you wanna connect your mixer to Skype with your microphone, I did figure out a way to do multi-channel into Skype. That's a different issue because Skype only takes a mono channel, which is the left channel on a multi-track mixer. With some software, you can fix that. But if it's just you interviewing someone else or just you and a co-host and you're going via USB, you'll be able to monitor both ways. Also, I tested out, because I talked about how you have to run the preamp so high, the gain up turned up so high in order to get a good visual waveform in your recording software, I recorded really low levels or more optimal levels 
you still need decent amount of gain to feed a dynamic mic like the PR40 that you saw me using. However, you can turn down the gain so the mic is not as sensitive. It picks up just you right in front of it. And if you have co-hosts that are sitting next to you, there will be a lot less mic bleed or no bleed at all, especially if you're using like a noise gate or an expander or something. You can do that and you can raise the level in post-production a lot. And this has such good preamps that it doesn't introduce any noise. The mixer isn't creating any noise. There's enough signal to noise ratio. The dynamic range is good enough that you can record at this lower level that you're seeing in something like Audition or Audacity. And you have plenty of room to bring that up to meet loudness specs. So pretty loud, lots of difference between what you recorded at and what you ended up at. And the audio sounds just as good. It sounds fantastic. So I ran test on that and it sounded great. The one difference here, if you are sending audio to Skype, in real time, that person needs to be able to hear it. So it may be harder to hear it if your gain is down low. So you may have to try to increase the volume, the microphone volume, if possible, in your computer. So that's one you still might have to work out, but just know you can record at really low levels, lower levels to make the mic less sensitive to people sitting right next to you and bring that up in post-production and still get really clean audio. All right, so if you made it this far, hopefully you liked the video, thumbs up. If you did, ask your questions in the comments. Hopefully I can answer all of them. There's a lot of things to know about this mixer. I've addressed a few. A lot of times the things I'm looking at are what podcasters need, but ask me, I can help you find the answer or maybe I know the answer. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.